We are following breaking news on this Friday. Amazon agreeing to buy Whole Foods for $13.7 billion. Let's talk about it now with Jim Cramer on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. All right, Jim, take it away. It's disruption of society, not just disruption. This is a uh, what I regard as being a move by Amazon to destroy the margins and own the business of food and groceries in this country. You can't compete with Amazon on price. You, but the big rap against Amazon was the food could spoil, okay? They, are, they needed this level of distribution. They, remember what they can do. They are a technology master. They can charge what they want and no one will mind. They could lose money for years and no one will mind. They can wipe out a whole industry. Everyone's in this industry, but no one has been able to success, successfully compete with Amazon when Amazon wants to dominate an industry. And I don't think this is going to be any different. Walmart will put up a fight. That's what Walmart will do. Everybody else has to think, do I surrender? Do I get out of food? How do I make money in food? Is now the food section of my business uh, really terrible? And let's overlay yesterday, Scott, what happened with Kroger, where Kroger told you, listen, we've got competition coming in from every side. You know, that Aldi, they got LITL coming in. They've got, uh, obviously, you always have the dollar stores. I mean, you know, we own at Fraction Alerts, we own Walgreens. I'm going to have to, you know, I'm going to do a noodle in this Walgreens. Walgreens has, has emphasized food of late. Maybe that's a mistake. So people who are, have tried to get food in order to be able to compete with the busy mother on the way home, and you know, busy parent, but that's how they view it, um, have suddenly had a uh, wake-up call. And the wake-up call is Amazon's in our business, and what they can do, even if you listen to Kroger, they were concerned before, what Amazon can do is lose money. They can lose money. Now, remember, if you're an Amazon Prime, what would happen? So how about if they say Amazon Prime, uh, today eggs are free. Amazon Prime, today we're giving away milk. Amazon Prime, go into our grocery aisle and you can get a sirloin for free. Amazon Prime is the ultimate club. Now you take Costco, Costco's a club. Absolutely, it's a great club and you get very good prices. Costco is the one that I think is, I, mean, if I, I don't want to buy any of these right now, I want the, I want the dust to settle because we've got to downgrade these industries. But Costco is the one that can compete because they, have a, they do it on a club basis and they pass along prices. Um, but food deflation is bad for them. They've given you an excellent, if you go back to conference calls, you have a great uh, disposition on food deflation. But this is what I call the most ultimate disruption that I have seen hmm. in an industry. One company coming in, now there's only 400 plus stores of Whole Foods, okay? But they had a roadmap to do 1,200. Activists came in, wanted me, uh, one of the things that Whole Foods prides itself is they make the most money uh, per square foot of, a, of any retailer. Now, Amazon doesn't need to do that, obviously. Now, Whole Foods has a great rep, uh, pre prepared foods. Uh, prepared foods was something that obviously Amazon couldn't do, right? Remember, think about what Amazon could and couldn't do. They could not do prepared foods, so they could not offer the virtual supermarket online. They could only offer them, you know, they were really paper towel tie. Let's think about it as paper towel tie. They were in the dry goods portion of the grocery business. They were struggling about how to do the fresh. Well, we now have to do fresh. Now, what does it do for Uber? Do they use Uber? Mm. Does someone else use Uber to deliver? You can no longer be um, just, you've got to be able to deliver against Amazon. That's another problem. See, if Amazon can deliver to your house, why do you want to stop at the store? Now, Amazon's got another, another thing. What Amazon's able to do, they already have, the biggest problem with supermarkets is checkout. But Amazon has been perfecting, and by the way, Debold Nixdorf is, is on DBT. They also have it. But they have been able to perfect this notion of shopping with this. So you could go to a Whole Foods, breeze right through, because you've done, you've checked everything, and then you're out. Um, so they've got no, I mean, one of the big problems against Whole Foods has been the lines. Well, we just eliminated the lines. Technology has eluded Whole Foods. One of the things that Whole Foods underspent on for a long time was point of sale. Well, you don't have to worry about that anymore because Amazon's the king of point of sale. So you've got a club membership that now includes everything. It's a consumption-driven company. Amazon is a country. And it's a country that offers everything that you need to eat, to feed and clothe the family. This is a feed and clothe a family situation. Just incredible. And, and what does this all mean for John Mackey? Well, John Mackey, they say, is going to stay. Uh, you know, I don't know. John Mackey is what I regard as a mercurial man. Uh, Walter Robb is a steady man. Walter <laughs> Robb is a great man. Walter Robb is a good man. I would love to see Walter Robb. He's the former co-CEO. Co I'd love to see him come back. 
I'd love to see them come back. Now, I, could Amazon do a two-class uh, employment situation? The Mackey people get paid more, and then a new level comes in and gets paid less because the, the Whole Foods people are paid more than anybody. Um, but remember, Amazon's non-union. So they could open a whole new group of Whole Foods that I believe are non-union and cheaper. Again, you're dealing with a competitor that has scale, that has cheap labor, that has supply chain management. That's the best we've ever seen. And they are um, somebody who, if you compete with, you can only compete on price, and no one has that balance sheet except for Walmart, maybe Costco. To compete on price against Amazon is to say, I'm going to lose mo money on food for now until the eyes can see. So think about it at Target. Think about it at the dollar stores. It's going to be very challenging here. Now, the dollar stores will say, well, wait a second. Our people are not generally Amazon shoppers mm. because they, don't, they can't afford the prime. But I still don't want to be in food uh, anywhere. And that's what this did. I mean, remember, the mall, what Amazon did to the mall, Amazon's now going to do to the grocery store. Huh. And remember, there's no given lifespan to a grocery store. When I was growing up, it was the Great Atlantic and Pacific Tea Company, OK? And Sears, well, hey, gee, Great Atlantic and Pacific, uh-uh. Sears, I don't know. I think that Sears, uh, they are a chunk of real estate that, that Amazon now needs, but not in any way that's going to benefit Sears. It's just incredible. And the, the other M&A deal that's, you know, on a much smaller scale, Walmart buying bonobos. Yeah, you know, I mean, look, um, Walmart wants to have an apparel to run through a, a jet.com, and, and that's fine. They've been on my show with Mad Money, and, you know, that's fine. I mean, you know, that's fine. It's like a flea. You know, it's the day, it's, you right. know, it's the, day, the night of the flea, okay, you know? All right. Moving on to some other stocks, there's a note out from Morgan Stanley saying that the Apple pullback is due to overall tech That's weakness. That's Katie Uberty, who's really fabulous, and I like her stuff. It's not going to necessarily change things right now because we have, these stocks are heavy. Uh, I've been saying that, you know, we downgraded Apple to a two uh, because we knew that there was just too much price. There's too many people talking about a super cycle. You know, when you have these sellers that come in, all you got to do is wait them out. Mm. And one of the things I learned as a hedge fund manager, patience is better. Patience is a true virtue. Wait out the sellers. Just wait them out. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. I'm trying to figure out right now whether I just mentioned Costco on on uh, Squawk of the Street. Costco is intriguing to me. Costco, but Costco, Costco can compete. It's intriguing to me. Not yet. Not yet. Uh, because they, you know, Costco has a lot of. Uh, 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 they can make a lot of deals, and they can. Uh, they have food deflation right now for the food that they have, but it's perishables. They can come down. They might. I don't know whether Costco can compete with Amazon in getting food. But remember, because they make their money on the card, I'm just noodling about Costco. I'm noodling. I'm noodling. Not sure yet. Not sure yet. Amazon should go through a thousand. All right, something to watch. Yeah, definitely. Also, uh, Credit Suisse downgraded Square. Yeah, Sarah Fryer's doing such an amazing job there. Uh, CFO, but really kind of runs the place. And she's just monster good. She's out of Goldman. She's just one of my absolute favorites. I think she does fab. We use caviar at Bar San Miguel. It's a terrific product. Should we switch to the point of sale product? I don't know. Uh, but I do think that Square uh, has moved up from 14 to 24 very fast. And that was because there were a lot of shorts in Square thinking that their business model, which was to lend to small business, was dangerous. But the, I've gone over this. David Vineyard's on the board. Now, he used to be the CFO of Goldman. And what I look at when I think about that situation is just that Square has a very good call on the cash that comes out of the register because that's what they see. So it turned out to be that their model wasn't nearly as dicey, so the shorts had to come in and cover just the way it was. Square, probably too high, too far, too fast. I give it a speeding ticket, but if it comes back to 20, bye bye bye. Hmm. All right, and then yesterday we had layoff announcements at Nike, and now the stock has been downgraded I'm by I'm struggling Jake. with Nike. I'm struggling with Nike because I think that the moves are going to be right, but the industry is so competitive. It's not like Nike and nobody else. Adidas came back to life, big balance sheet there. Under Armour, obviously, uh, Kevin Plank's part of the mix and paying up for endorsements. Um, but Nike, uh, Europe had been slowing. The United States is bad. The wholesale chain's bad. Uh, is Nike finished? No. But Nike's going to have to, it's a Nike reset, and I tend not to want to play the resets for a couple. Of quarters. Hey Jim, what did you make of these Snap shares getting slammed yesterday? Well, you know, Snap has got 900 million shares that are going to come off, uh, 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 kind of off patent, so to speak. If you want to look at it, like it's going to become a generic stock. I never liked the two classes that no vote. I don't like the situation with no vote. We did a fabulous corporate governance conference for the street and deal. I, 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 I just think that what's happened with Square is, is that there's going to be tremendous pressure on the stock when that comes in. And then we have to rethink. Um, I know that uh, DJ Khaled loves I, he, he loves uh, snap. snap, he loves Snap, but my problem with Snap is Instagram. Mm. Instagram is so on its game. 
right here. So on its game, and Mark Zuckerberg is, is such a, uh, a laser-like focused guy. It, 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 he's Amazon to Kroger, okay? They're Kroger. We Actually, love. they wish they were Kroger. Kroger's <laughs> a great American company, but there's nothing you can do in the end because Amazon is the Army, Navy, the Marines, okay? They're coming in and they're the Air Force and you are uh, cavalry. You're cavalry. I mean, these guys are cavalry. I mean, you're coming in with cavalry. These guys, Amazon's <laughs> mechanized in their cavalry. It, it just doesn't work. My grandfather was in the cavalry, served with Pershing. No go, man. No go against mechanized. Mm -mm, Amazon's no world, way. we just live yeah. in it. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. That's why this it's got, should go one through 1,000, should have been below. But it's, you know, it's sui generis. It's a sui, that's what they learned out of law school. Sui generis. <laughs> no one is like going to come up with something like this again. And um, what can I say? I do love Amazon. We all love Amazon. We got that button you can press, the, the tide comes. Now I want the steaks <laughs> to come. I press the button, I want the steak, and I want the steak. What I really want, I want the T bone, okay? <laughs> and I want the T bone in time because the barbecue is on, and I want some charcoal, and then boom, and it's there. I mean, it's what we've always wanted. It's kind of like the Jetsons. <laughs> um, I mean, it's not even worth talking about this, but, but Facebook is now going to be using artificial Love intelligence. Love Facebook. Love Facebook. <laughs> but, you know, Facebook's when you remember, it's Fang. Whoever created that Fang, I want to just demolish him. Hey, you did. <laughs> what can you James do? James Kramer created Fang. What can you do? <laughs> um, always imitated, never, you know, always duplicated, but never been able to be beaten. <laughs> I saw someone come up with FAM. I said, FAM doesn't stand for anything. No. Well, you, you at least got to be alliterative. I mean, the people who try to come in against me, there's a big mode on this stuff. No, we got FANG, and Jim also created candies. I created candies, and those stocks are doing incredibly well. They've crushed the market. Even though the D was Deckers, I'm being incredible. And you go to realmoney.com for more on candies. Indeed. <laughs> and then a big day for, for Actual Earnings Plus. We have the Dow DuPont merger getting Oh, approved. my God, this is so big. Now, look, it's not going to be three different companies. Will you relax? They're going to spin off as they spin off. There's going to be a lot being done. Ed Breen is one of the great value creators. I may have to spend time studying Breen this weekend. He's a remarkable guy, and he's a scrappy guy. He's a scrappy guy. And he, you know, Dan Loeb is like, you think Dan Loeb has, like, got a plan. And you know what? He knows. He knows not to press too hard on Ed Breen. Because, you know, Ed Breen brings a gun to a knife fight. <laughs> All right, Jim, so much for a quiet Friday. <laughs> thank, yeah. thank you yeah, so much. Yeah, I was going to go to the Hamptons. Screw that. <laughs> Talk to you later. All right, thanks so much, Jim. For more on Amazon and Whole Foods, stay with the street.